Thank you very much. Please let's take our seats. Your Excellencies, Honorable Cabinet Secretaries, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. A year ago, we stood here at KICC to launch our bold vision to transform the delivery of government services in Kenya. It was time to take a decisive step towards making public service delivery inclusive, efficient, fulfilling the rights of our people, and accelerating national development. That vision came to fruition with the relaunch of the e-citizen platform, an ambitious initiative designed to bring the benefits of convenience, transparency, and inclusivity to all citizens, as well as to our international clients. Today, we return to the very place where this journey began to celebrate the first anniversary of this transformative platform. This event is therefore a fitting homecoming to commemorate innovation, resilience, delivery, and achievement. Over the past year, we have broken barriers of resistance and transcended historic and systemic obstacles to embrace a digital future for our people, demonstrating that the path to Kenya's prosperous destiny is indeed digital. This milestone reflects our commitment to create a more connected, efficient, and equitable system of public service delivery. When we relaunched eCitizen, we set out to dismantle inefficiencies, delays, bureaucracy, red tape, and frustrations that had plagued service delivery in Kenya for decades. We sought to end the unnecessary burden of navigating physical offices, standing in long queues, and enduring avoidable delays and inconveniences. We envisioned a Kenya where geographical disparities no longer dictate access to public service, where citizens in the most remote areas could enjoy the same conveniences as those in urban centers. We aspired to build a system that prioritizes integrity over corruption, efficiency over waste, and inclusivity over exclusion. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly stand before you today to declare, and I am confident you can all attest that each citizen has delivered on this promise. Now from the comfort of your home and with just a mobile phone, you can renew your driving license, register a business name or a business entity, or apply for a marriage certificate, tasks that once took weeks of travel, paperwork, and endless follow-ups, often at great expense. These are now completed in minutes, sometimes in just a day. One year on, eCitizen now hosts, as of yesterday when I met my speech, it was 20,855. I'm told by this morning, it is 22,515 services of a thriving community of 13 million users. Revenue collection through the platform has grown significantly, enabling the government to mobilize critical resources for public projects. E-Citizen is not just a digital service delivery platform. It represents a paradigm shift that has redefined public service delivery in Kenya and profoundly impacted lives. In many ways, both big and small public services, both big and small, 
our understanding and expectations of how public service services are provided have fundamentally changed. Consider the story of a mother in a remote village who once walked tens of kilometers to apply for her child certificate, often making repeated trips due to delays. Or the citizen, or a senior citizen, who struggled to access replacement services for vital documents. Today, these services are relics of the past. These challenges are relics of the past, as the e-citizen platform systematically dismantled barriers to efficient service delivery. This transformation extends beyond individuals. The digital IC eco ICT ecosystem, including cyber cafes, mobile device shops, and auxiliary businesses have flourished, creating jobs, fostering wealth, and driving economic growth. The ripple effect of e-citizen are no longer confined to digital transformation. Its impact on service delivery has improved lives, strengthened hope, and opened new opportunities across our nation. By digitizing services, we have significantly enhanced efficiency, saving time and money for both citizens and government. Less paperwork translates to lower costs, streamlined processes reduces administrative burdens, and less bureaucracy leads to faster service delivery. These savings are also being redirected towards critical areas such as health, education, infrastructure, and job creation. The transformation does, doesn't stop here. As a matter of fact, the success of e-citizens, e-citizen has propelled Kenya onto the global stage as a trailblazer in harnessing digital technology. We have become a model for how governments can promote efficiency and competitiveness in the digital age. Consequently, I have received many requests to facilitate benchmarking exercises and inquiries for lessons and insights from several countries across our continent. As a leader in leveraging the homegrown innovation to solve serious challenges, we are proud to partner with our friends in their own transformation journeys in different uh, parts of the world. But we will not allow ourselves to get carried away by our achievements and risk letting the future sweep past us while we celebrate. We must not and cannot stop here. Even as we mark this remarkable location, we are already looking ahead to map our way further into the future. We are making significant investments in better technology, expanding the national fiber optic infrastructure and ensuring that reliable and affordable internet is accessible to all Kenyans. Accordingly, I have directed the ICT ministry to accelerate these initiatives, and I had a candid conversation with the minister and her team yesterday. You understand what we agreed? Um, we are also implementing favorable tax policies and incentives to make smartphones and data affordable for every citizen so that we leave no one behind. Artificial intelligence is the next frontier, and we are already witnessing its transformative potential. AI offers opportunities to reimagine service delivery. For instance, an AI-powered jackpot on eCitizen could provide instant solutions to inquiries, reducing wait times, and minimizing opportunities for fraud. With AI, we can move from reactive to proactive service delivery, anticipating the needs of citizens and designing solutions that meet their expectations. By responsibly leveraging public data, we can shift from citizen-centered approaches to citizen-driven solutions, 
ensuring that our services meet the unique needs of every Kenyan. As we celebrate the remarkable achievements of each citizen, we must remain steadfast in our commitment to innovate and the whole ecosystem around innovation and adaptation in the digital economic, economy space. I commend our ministries, departments, and agencies for embracing this policy shift and providing public services through digital platforms. Your compliance has, has seen and has been the backbone of our transformation. We will be awarding some winners, the people who have excelled in making uh, or in taking advantage of this digitization of government services today. As we recognize them, I have a list. Uh, I will send a list this morning. Give me my phone. I will send a list this morning of people who are still manga mangaring. Yeah. Um, and I want to um, put them on notice. The people who still uh, are playing games with us. The following, the CEOs of the following entities are put on notice. Just hold on. Because um, when I went out to campaign, I remember making one statement that was fundamental. I said in my administration, there will be no money to steal. And part of that journey of making sure that there is no money to steal is through this digitization. Because through digitization, we connect service delivery to revenue collection. And you can see for yourselves that because of digitization, especially of government services and government revenue collection programs, we are seeing phenomenal increase in revenues. I gave an example the other day of KWS. You all remember um, what we did with the KWS. When we digitized KWS, and insisted that they now must all get fees and services offered by KWS must be on e-citizen. We had a lot of pushback. The tour operators did not want it. KWS staff were reluctant. And I remember calling uh, Kanga and telling him, my friend, it's a fait accompli. The decision has been made. Get everybody to comply. There is no escape. Look at what has happened. In fact, those who are against the digitization of government services at the KWS, even orchestrated, you know, in our gates, long queues. Oh, you know, this system is not working. The tourists are not happy because now there is a long queue, because tour operators were charging tourists $100 and paying government $50. And they didn't want a disruption of that system. Now what has happened? We insisted the system is working. I listened to Aisha today from KWS. I listened to Susan, and they were giving us wonderful stories about success. In fact, they have reduced on the time. Is Susan here, the lady who spoke to me at the KWS desk? Is she here? And, uh, and Aisha, I don't know whether they're here. Yes, Aisha Kuja Pambele. So, 
and uh, and Wanjiro, where Wapi uh, Susan, there was also a lady, another Wanjiro lady there. So today they were telling me that they have reduced the time they serve their clients from five minutes per client to two minutes. Where they were taking 10 minutes, they can now do it in five minutes. Yeah? So look at that transformation and explain to me what was that resistance about? Aisha so, Kujab. Uh, yes. Now, can you tell these people what you told me about what has happened to KWS? Uh, after onboarding our services to the e-citizen platform, we have enhanced our services. Our clients are happy now. We used to serve clients per client. We used to take 10 minutes. Now it has been reduced to five minutes for customers who are being served at the gate. Clients with prepaid ticket, we have a prepaid ticket. You can pay at your comfort of your house or home. It only takes two minutes to process the client at the gate. Susan, you told me something. Yes, sir. Your Excellency, I mentioned that because our tickets have a QR code, the customer service team at the gates scan the QR code, and by doing so, they make sure that the card is valid, and at the point of exit, they also invalidate the card to make sure that it is not used again. It is not recycled, in essence. That means that we have reduced and closed the gaps on revenue uh, leaks in the service. And this has contributed to what Madam has said, that we have seen a growth in our income generation and revenue collection, Your Excellency. From 5.3 billion the year before we introduced a citizen to now 7. Point what, uh, Mr. Kanga? 7.6 billion. It means a whole 2 billion shillings used to end up in people's pockets. That is what Thank you very much, ladies. You are great people. Thank you very much. And this is the story across government in many departments. And we are going to be recognizing the people like KWS who have seen their revenues enhanced, grow, because they have embraced uh, e-citizen. There are government agencies that are still doji. And I want to put them on notice. The National Cancer Institute of Kenya, Kenya Hospital Authority Trust Fund, Kenya Nutritionist and Dietitians Institute, Health Records and Information Managers Board, National Syndemic Disease Control Council, Occupational Therapy Council of Kenya, Digital Health Authority, you are a new entity, but you must comply. Kenya Biovax Institute Limited. I know the CEO, please tell him I am putting him on notice. Kenya National Public Health Institute, Kenya Health Human Resource Authority, Kenya Water Institute, Tanathi Waterworks Development Agency, Water Sector Trust Fund, Kenya Engineering Technology Registration Board, Kenya Ports Authority, Independent Police Oversight Authority, Private Security Regulatory Authority, Nairobi International Financial Center, Kenya Reinsurance Corporation, Financial Reporting Center, Kenya Institute of Supplies Management, Consolidated Bank of Kenya, Development Bank of Kenya, Kenya Accountants and Secretaries National Examination Board, Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya, Institute of Certified Secretaries, Energy and Petroleum Regulation Authority, 
Kenya Power Company Limited, Rural Electrification and Renewable Energy, Geothermal Development Company, GTC, Kenya Petroleum Refineries Limited, National Defense University, the Kenya Space Agency, the Kenya Shipyard Limited. These entities have yet to comply with my directive that their services and payments and revenues must be on e-citizen platform so that Treasury can follow on the revenues that are being collected by government. They have one week to comply. They have one week to comply. Otherwise, they know what to do. They can make use of the door. It's as simple as that. Number two, we still have government agencies that yes, they have come to the citizen platform, but once in a while, they retreat to go and pay or use alternative means of payments, including games with some banks. I want a record in the last three months of government agencies that are already on the e-citizen platform but have decided to use alternative means with gray spaces so that we can take action against the people who are doing, who are undermining transparency in the collection of public resources. Mr. Ocheng, I want that list on my desk in the next three days. Yes. We cannot continue to collect public money in gray areas and in dark corners. We said that all the 1,100 plus pay bills that were being used by all manner of entities, money that we were not sure whether it was ending up in public coffers, be closed. I am happy all of them have been closed. But there cannot be another route. We want a place where the public can know this is the portal where their money is coming. We can follow up on revenues for every public entity, and we can know what citizens are paying for gets to the public coffers. I know those people are listening to me, the people who still want to play games, and I want to tell them there will be no escape for anybody to continue practices that undermine transparency in the collection of public funds. I call upon everyone and all Kenyans, as well as our partners and friends, to rally together and build on this success to make Kenya a global leader in digital governance, a hub for innovation, and a beacon of transparency and efficiency. The dream of a digital Kenya is no longer an aspiration. It is a lived reality that we do every day. And therefore, I want to commend the e-citizen team led by Ochien. Can we have the e-citizen team people stand here? We give them a round of applause. Let us, to a big coffee, how are Kenya? They are, these are great Kenyans. Congratulations for doing a good job. And you have 
my support as you make sure that every government service is brought onto the digital platform and make sure that every cent paid by the government, by the people of Kenya, is not lost in between. It is also the reason why our rollout of um, our universal health coverage program, we insisted that to get rid of inefficiencies of the past, to get rid of the fraud and leakages of money meant for health in the past, we drive this whole universal health coverage on a digital platform. I am very happy with the progress that has been made in making it easy for claims to be assessed, making it easy for citizens to access services, and making it easy for us to deliver using a digital platform, including from registration all the way to services in hospitals and all the way to claims that are made. Today, uh, we are paying the claims that were accrued for October, making it possible that uh, we are paying, I think, 1.7 billion today. Reconciliation that would have taken months now is taking weeks because we are operating this on a digital platform. And we are going to get rid, for example, of claims that have been a backlog and a burden to hospitals. After they deliver service, they have to wait many months, sometimes many years. Some of the claims we are paying now are accruing from NHIF are a decade old. Some of them are 10 years, some of them are 15 years, because the system wasn't together. But those 15 year claims, we are now going to be paying last month, this month. We, every month we are going to be praying for uh, in the following month to make it efficient, to make it transparent, and to enhance service delivery so that hospitals that deliver service get their money, refunds, so that they can continue to deliver service. It is also the same reason why we are working now on making sure that our revenue collection is also brought into a very open digital space. I am working with the Kenya Revenue Authority together with partners to make sure that again, our revenues collected by the Kenya Revenue Authority are not subject to the usual pilferage and losses. And um, shortly, we will be at the place where a citizen is uh, today. When I said it a year ago that we are going to digitize government services from the 394 that were mentioned, to then our target was 7,000. We have surpassed 10,000. We are now at 22,515. And it is my commitment that hopefully in the next couple of months, every government service must be on a digital platform so that citizens can enjoy efficiency, citizens can pay for services from the comfort of their homes, we get rid of physical um, challenges, we get rid of extensive travel, we get rid of long queues, we get rid of follow-ups that citizens have to travel back and forth to get government services that are obvious for every uh, citizen. We are looking into the future, as I said, moving this to the next level is to make sure that we also have a digital ID, we can pay for uh, government services. I am very happy that from, is it today or tomorrow, we are running the first pilot of paying our cash transfer on e-citizen. For those of you who follow this, we have close to almost two million people who benefit from our cash transfer program. I made two commitments on cash transfer. 
The first commitment I made in the last election was that I want these very vulnerable citizens, the aged, orphans, and people living with disability, to be paid as we pay salaries of public servants. They used to wait for eight months, six months, you know? I am very happy that now we have implemented, we are paying as we pay salaries. That was my first commitment. My second commitment was that these very deserving beneficiaries had to queue in banks, travel many kilometers to be able to get their stipends paid. I committed then that we will work out a digital platform and pay them through alternative means other than banks. I'm very happy that the first tranche of that money, when are we going to pay uh, Motari? From tomorrow, From tomorrow? Yes, yes. Very good. So from tomorrow, we will begin to pay for, in, for those Kenyans on a digital platform. They don't have to queue in banks. They don't have to travel many kilometers. They can get their money from the comfort of their villages. Yeah? So um, it's another very proud moment for me as we accomplish some of the commitments that we have made and transform our country by making sure that government services, government delivery of government services, and for payments that citizens either have to receive from government or to pay to government is seamless, is efficient, and is fraud free. Imagine a Kenya where no one is left behind, where opportunity knows no barriers, and where technology bridges the gap to prosperity for every citizen. This is the Kenya we are building. And together, I mean together, we will make it happen. So I want to ask you and ask every citizen of our great nation to be a partner, to walk with us in this journey, to look at the opportunities that are there, to play their role in making sure that we accomplish the mission that we have set for ourselves of making this country great. Again, let me ask ministries, departments, agencies. There, is, there are no two ways about it. We cannot have two rules. All of us must be transparent integrity of public services and public resources is foremost. That is a demand by the people of Kenya. It is not a request. And that is a right that the people of Kenya deserve. And it is our duty and responsibility to deliver on it. And I promise you, I am committed to it. And you are either coming along with me in making sure that we deliver on this commitment. I don't want to say what will happen if you don't. So thank you very much. This is a very proud moment for me that um, we are on course on making sure that Kenya moves uh, to the next level. Um, as I said, we are going to confound our critics. They, they will. I'm sure they will have nowhere to hide as we go forward. And they will know that we meant every commitment that we made. And we intend, I personally will lead in making sure that we deliver on every commitment we made to the people of Kenya because it is the least that we can do in making our contribution as leaders of the moment in taking our country to the next level. It is a commitment we made, and it is a right that the people of Kenya deserve, and it is a contribution that those of us who have the privilege to be leaders, it is our, ours to deliver on that, uh, on that commitment. So Asante Nisana, I wish you well. I know there is a lot of work to be done in many other fields, 
and I look forward to working with all of you as Sana. God bless you. Thank you. Another round of applause for His Excellency.